Hi, doing? everybody. All right, Rebecca is super awesome. And you're gonna hear me say awesome. I'm still stuck on awesome. I'm a Teenage Thanks. Mutant Ninja Turtle. My brother grew up watching, I'm from the 80s. So in the 90s, I, we say awesome. Um, Rebecca is going to help you look at some of the things that you can let go of that maybe you don't need on your journey uh, that are maybe kind of tying you down or making things uh, less, less smooth, less easy. And so while you're going to hear me say, yes, let's focus on where we want to go. So much of the journey is just making room for stuff, uh, letting go of things. Yes, I love that, Al. Cowabunga. Boom. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much, Rebecca, for joining us. I'm going to get off stage here and let you go. Uh, Rebecca is joining us from more than across the pond. Where are you coming to us from today, Rebecca? I'm going from Israel today. Awesome. Thank you so much for making the trip. We appreciate you. <laughs> quick, hope, hope customs wasn't so good <laughs> or wasn't so bad. Thank you so much. I'm going to listen to your stuff. I did get and, swapped, um, you know, my Corona test. <laughs> oh, boom. There you Just go. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks, Rebecca. Okay. Hi, everybody. Okay. So, um, sorry, wait, I can share my screen. I have. You can share your screen now. Yeah, okay, great. I like doing this when you can't see me, but you hear my voice. It's kind of like, yeah. All right, this awesome. is God. You can share your screen now. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Let me just make this full screen here so I can figure out how to do it. Uh, so I'm I'm Rebecca Saltzman. I'm really happy to, to be here today. Um, and I can't figure out how to make it full if screen. If you go to now, view, but... it should be under view. And then full yeah. screen's down a bit. Here we go. Uh, about halfway down. A little further down. Boom. Okay. So hi, everybody. I'm Rebecca. And actually what Wade was talking about, uh, I came on early just to hear what he was talking about. And the thing about um, stuff is that it actually really inhibits us from doing the things that we want to do because, you know, it takes up our time. So today we're going to talk about reducing clutter, improving productivity, saving time and money because you have less clutter. So uh, let's, let's just dive right in here. Um, okay, so my motto is clear your clutter, clear your mind. And the thing about doing that is that when you have like stuff constantly around, it just makes it more difficult to focus on exactly what what is going on. It makes it more difficult to focus on the tasks that you need to do. And what it ends up doing is it ends up taking longer to complete your task. So if you're like really interested in heading to the beach, if you are not working in an area that is clear and clean, I mean, um, unless you're sitting at your car at the beach, right, with your laptop plugged in, that's awesome too. But if you're sitting in an area that's not, you know, conducive to having a clear mind where you can think and focus, it's going to be a much, much more difficult to actually get out and reduce the amount of time that you're working. So I always like to tell people that clearing your clutter does improve productivity. It saves time and money. And today we're going to talk about exactly how that happens. So when you have less stuff, you actually have less to worry about. There's a Jewish proverb that says uh, more possessions, more worry. And I find that to be totally true because when you have like just more stuff than you actually need, when you actually have like an excess of stuff, it actually becomes more difficult to care for things because there's just more to manage. Like a bigger house uh, is actually harder to take care of. There's more rooms to clean. There's more toilets to clean. There's more floor space to clean. There's more to pick up. Oftentimes I find that when people have larger homes, they tend to put more stuff in the house, which means that there's more stuff to care for. So when you have less stuff, you have less to care for. Um, that usually equals less to pay for. And when you have less to care for and less to pay for, uh, you don't, you know, have to earn less money, but earning more money doesn't become necessarily the priority anymore because you can find a way to live comfortably within your means and be happy and feel gratitude for the things that you have. And you'll have much less stuff on your to-do list. But I just want to highlight that Actually, I think that sometimes having less allows you to make better purchases when you need something. And it allows you to focus on gratitude, which as you all know, is a receptor for bringing more good things into your life. So the more gratitude we have, the happier we feel, and the easier it is for, for 
for good things to come our way. I always say, if you want abundance to come into your life, then you got to make space for the abundance, right? So that's really important. When you have less stuff, there's space for abundance to come in. So let's define what clutter is exactly. And clutter, according to Webster's, is just a collection of things lying about in an untidy mess. And while sometimes that just happens because, you know, that's life. And I, I mean, I have three kids. I don't know if you guys have any kids or not, uh, or you have a spouse or whatever, like animals, pets, right? Like sometimes things just come into our lives and, and they are untidy, but the ideal is when you can actually get them very quickly resolved, it makes things much, much easier. Um, the important thing to remember is that we actually, excuse me, we actually accumulate clutter by buying it. Like we are saying like, oh yes, I am gonna consciously bring this thing into my life, right? I'm gonna go to the store, I'm gonna get online and go on Amazon and I'm gonna order 10,000 things and they're all just gonna magically show up at my house, <laughs> right? Or if you go to Target, right? Like it's all gonna show up in your house and you've gone shopping without planning. You've gone shopping without being thoughtful. You've gone shopping without being grateful. And I think that what happens is, is you end up accumulating a lot, a lot of stuff and you haven't made a plan for any of that stuff. So when we go out and like not and we're not thoughtful about what we're purchasing, we actually cause ourselves to be more cluttered and you know, we bring it on ourselves. It's true, sometimes you get it as gifts, but uh, I think that's less, less frequent than actually what we are purchasing for ourselves. And the ironic part is, is a lot of times we purchase things uh, because we think it will make us more productive or it will save us time or it will save us energy or money or it will make us healthier. And then we don't end up using it. Like, I can't tell you how many times I go to someone's house and there's like, I don't know, 20 bottles of vitamins that nobody ever used and they're like expired for 10 years or <laughs> fitness equipment or workout clothing or just any kind of clothing, really. Like we have these high hopes. We have some sort of like, uh, disposable income and we go ahead and we just let ourselves accumulate. And what that does is it creates clutter, but it also creates more responsibility for us. So the big question is, of course, how do you actually get rid of the clutter? So I, I want to, before I talk about that, I just want to go through exactly why we keep, go through why exactly we keep clutter, because I think once you understand why you keep it, uh, it's easier to let things go. And, and in my experience, what I have found is that you keep clutter either because of worry, fear, sentiment, or obligation. And I have to say that there are some times when I feel, when I fall prey to this too, like, oh, well, you know, this item was new and I barely used it. And, you know, if I, if I give it up, then, you know, maybe I'll need it in the future. But I think we're fooling ourselves thinking that if we haven't used something in a long time, said for things that come in like emergency situations. Um, but I think we are fooling ourselves when we say to ourselves like, oh, one day we'll need this. And okay, yeah, it's true. Sometimes once you find something and you give it away, then, you know, the next day you're like, oh, that would have come in really handy, right? But here's the thing about that you probably didn't even remember that you had that object before you found it when you're decluttering. And once you, and like, even if you knew that you had it, you didn't know where it was. So it was like not on your mind. And I find that like what happens a lot of times is because people have so much clutter is that they, they can't organize themselves and they end up buying duplicates and spending a lot more money on things and wasting time shopping for things that they already have because they can't find the first thing. So um, that's just a little side point, but the, the biggest problem with clutter is that it, it delays us from finding what we need and it's a big time waster, but we keep it because it seems like 
sometimes it's the right thing to do. And I think that we have to just move past that and come from, from the stuff as a, as a, as a, in an abundant mindset. So if you like the way that you want to work, you know, fewer days per, per week, the same thing, like you've got to make space for that to happen. If you want that to happen, you got to minimize and reduce what needs to happen in your day so that you can take care of the things that you want to take care of and the people you want to take care of. So the most important way to actually getting decluttered is to dedicate time to this. <laughs> and I know that people, people are always like, okay, so can you just come to my house and throw out all the stuff? And I'm like, nope, can't do that. And the reason why I can't do that is because I don't know what you need. And so my job is to keep you on track. My job is to help you figure out where to put everything and figure out why you need something and why you don't need something. But when it comes to actually decluttering, if you don't dedicate time to dealing with it, it's just not going to happen. So many people are like, yeah, just come to my house and let it go. And I'm like, I just, I can't, I can't do that because it's like weight loss. If you want to lose weight, you have to put in the effort. You have to go to the gym. You have to eat healthy. You have to reduce your calories. You have to meal plan, right? Like if that's something that you want to happen in your life, you got to put in the time and the effort. The good news is, is once you put in the time and the effort, uh, it takes a lot less time to maintain. It's fairly easy to maintain and it's a lot faster than trying to lose weight. So, so once you dedicate time to dealing with it, um, that's going to, that's going to be the first step and it's going to really move you forward. I always say, if it's not on your calendar, it's not real. So officially put, you know, every Sunday at 3 PM on your calendar as, you know, four hour time slot as a way to declutter and, and, and really stick to that. And the way you can stick to that is by number two, is getting help if you're struggling with actual process, if you're struggling with the time management aspect of it. Because a lot of us, even though we want to declutter, we're just not motivated enough. So you could get a pro like me, a personal organizer, and that's great. But you don't need to get a personal organizer. And a lot of times it's enough if a uh, an older child helps you or um, a friend or your spouse. It doesn't have to be a pro. The advantage that I found to a pro is like getting a personal trainer when you're trying to work out is that they can help guide you in a way that, you know, your friend, your spouse, your kid, your whatever can't necessarily guide you because, you know, I deal with this all day long. So when you get stuck psychologically, like I can push you through. The other thing that I've found is that when people put money on the table and pay for a pro to help them, it gets done because they've invested in themselves. So if you're having trouble putting the time on the calendar and sticking to it, you know, get someone to help you who, even if they're not a pro, like who you pay, like, okay, you're not going to pay your spouse, but a friend, like, okay, I'm going to buy you lunch, your kid, like you're going to get to pick dinner tonight, whatever it is. Put some sort of consequence out there so that or, you know, some sort of monetary <laughs> penalty if you don't do it, like make yourself a penalty so that you can actually get things done. Um, and, and again, get help wherever you need it. And number three is start small. Find places where you can have easy wins. I always like to have people start in the bathroom. It seems like a kind of ridiculous place, but it's actually not because most people can clear out their bathrooms in between 10 and 30 minutes. And most people, not all people, but some, most people. Um, it depends on how big your bathroom is, but find these small little places where you can have big wins. Hit the night table next to your bed. Hit one drawer in your desk. Wherever it is, uh, it doesn't matter. Like starting small so you can have these easy wins and start to feel the difference makes a huge, huge, huge difference. From a practical standpoint, when you're actually decluttering, you're going to just want to pull everything out of the space, wipe down the space, and then 
slowly put things back. I found that that when you're going by yourself is the easiest way to fastest way to manage things. And, and another thing is if you have a lot of categories within the, the area, like, so let's say we're talking about a bathroom. So you have like oral health, you have hair care, you have uh, first aid, whatever categories you have, separate things by categories uh, as, you're, as you're putting them back. And that's gonna be your organizational system, which is huge because a lot of the time what happens and why people get cluttered in the first place is because they just don't have any systems in place. So for example, if dishes tend to collect in your kitchen sink and you, know, you don't really wanna do the dishes, one thing that really makes it easier for a lot of people is to never put dishes in their kitchen sink and just load them into the dishwasher or anything that needs to be washed by hand. Like I always tell my clients to have a basin in their kitchen sink full of water so that like everything just gets dropped in. And then when you're ready to clean it, it's chick chock and it, it's much faster. So putting these like smaller systems in place is really, really important. And another thing that's really, really gonna help with organization is to clearly define real estate for, for uh, whatever category of things you're putting there. So get your label maker out or get some masking tape or order labels on Amazon or whatever you need to make it clear to you where things go, but not just to you, to other people who you live with and it's going to be like life changing once you designate a specific space of real estate for something, uh, whatever it is, and actually know that it goes there. And when you're ready to clean up, it's much faster and it's easier to clean as you go when you know where things live. Okay. The most important thing here is to be honest. Most people are just not honest about what they actually need and what they actually don't need. And so go through the list uh, that we went through. Are you holding on to it because you're worried, afraid? It's, it feels like obligatory, it's sentimental. You're worried like you might need it. Whatever it is, address that feeling. Be like, okay, I'm worried. I need my phone because, you know, I can't, I can't live without it. And okay, so maybe this is not the thing that you declutter. But when you're going through your, let's say, electronics, and you find like a bunch of broken charging cables, and you're holding on to them because, oh, well, you know, I might need this. It's broken. <laughs> you went out and you bought something new because that one was broken and you were holding on to it just in case. But even when the just in case comes, it's not going to work for you. So let it go. <laughs> and, and that's where the honesty needs to come in. Be honest about what you actually need and what you don't need. And, and it's going to be a lot easier. On that same note, when you have, when you buy something to replace something that's broken, get rid of the broken item right away. There's no point in saving it because it's broken. And finally, Give everything a home. I touched upon this a little bit already, but it's worth mentioning again. Give everything a home. If you can't give it a place to live, then I would question if you actually really need it. Because if it's not important enough to give a piece of real estate to, do you actually need this item? And I think that asking yourself that question, and I know it's very popular to ask yourself, oh, does this spark joy or does this not spark joy? Ah, do your mortgage paper spark joy? Does your kitchen spatula spark joy? No. Do we need those things? Yes. So like if you can't give it a place to live, then maybe you have one too many kitchen spatulas. Uh, I also think that it's important because there are definitely some things that even though they don't bring us joy, we need to keep them like the mortgage paper. So setting up systems for how you manage your papers so that when new papers come in, you can quickly slot them and, and deal with them, regardless of if they're digital or hard copy. When a paper comes in, you want to know like, okay, this is going to this file on my computer. This is going to that folder in my filing cabinet, whatever it is, give it a home in the real world, in the digital world, it doesn't matter. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, this is my contact information. And um, I guess I'll check out the questions now. I saw that there were some uh, things in the chat here. So I'm just gonna stop the share.
And uh, were there questions for me? I didn't uh, yeah, so first of all, thank okay. you uh, for sharing your your insights. Uh, there's so much to that that I think is is so cool. So we had we had, we had a couple comments and so, okay, first of all, see, yes, let's see. Uh, da, da. Debbie said, I yes, I yeah, I don't see any love actual. my spaces. <laughs> Alice says, I can't stand clutter. I'm always trying to maximize my workspace and hobby space. Um, I said, my wife is an awesomely dedicated clutterer. Uh, I always try to make sure that I remain useful because if I'm not <laughs> useful. Um, it's good. It's good to have a schlepper when you're like and I, and I, in. And I like that you, you took out the spark joy because I don't always spark joy in my wife. But, <laughs> but she hasn't I'm, thrown I'm usually, you out yet. The useful, the useful part keeps me, keeps me safe. Um, so one of the things that I've had people ask me about, um, Rebecca, and, and some of these are things that came even, you know, you and I did the podcast interview and I had some people say two things and you address one of them, which was, which I liked, which is, you know, do I have to have a professional declutterer? And to me, it's like anything else. Well, there's, there's different levels. You, you might not need that person. I mean, it sounds like a person should just get started and, and try to do something first, right? And then see if they can do it. And if at five hours later, they're looking at the same things, then then maybe they, they maybe they need help. So the thing about help is that I find that for certain areas, people might be like really efficient at it, but they might need help on other areas. So a lot of times people are like, hey, I'm feeling really good about getting through the papers, but I'm really stuck in the garage. And so like, because that task seems much more overwhelming and they, they don't know how to approach it. Actually, one of the things that I talk about um, a lot with my, with my people is uh, kids. And a lot of times people say like, go clean, parents say to kids, go clean your room, right? Well, what, what does that mean? Like, it's not clear. So when, it's the same for you. Like when you're standing in the garage or the basement or the attic or someplace that you don't go a lot and it's just sort of become the dump, it all feels overwhelming because you just don't know where to start. So if you're feeling like, okay, yeah, I can manage the kitchen. Yeah, I can manage the paperwork. Yeah, I can do my bedroom closet, but I just need help in this one area. That's fine. Like, I think you have to sort of know your limits. It's like, if you can go to the gym, if you want to train for a marathon, right? Like you can, you can hire someone to coach you like part of the time and, and give you a routine to manage the rest. Like I always give my clients homework in between. So like, if they're stuck, like they can also do some by themselves and also do some with me. Like it's not so, it doesn't have to be like an all or nothing thing. I think that's awesome. I think, you know, People forget like anything else, it's usually not going to happen right away. I know in, in the case of my parents, they had moved after having, well, they had moved a while before, but they had kept a house for, there's a little overlap while they had the house and would, had been in the second house. So it was, now it was time to, okay, we're finally going to let go of this house that they'd had for 40 something years. And so we as the kids all went over, it's about an hour and a half from where we live. And just like you said, there were certain things I would watch my father and my mother there were certain things they could tear right through. And usually it was the more right. practical stuff like, okay, you know, the, I mean, like, like, okay, does this shaving lotion, is there anything in here? No. Okay. Great toss or whatever. Th that was simple. Yeah. But there were some of the things where I remember as the kids were like, okay, then we're just going to bring it across. We're going to load it. It was literally quicker. And this is not a knock on my parents. My parents are very intelligent people. They're, they're very uh, coherent. They're very clear. They're, but there's so much depth and memory with some of their stuff that we couldn't just like, I'd see my dad looking at it and you know, he was getting lost in the memory. And, and that's not a bad thing. It's but not, we, it but takes we were like, longer. okay, but we need to get our butts over to the other side of the state soon. Right. So it, it really, and it, we did it over, I think like four or five trips. And I mean, there was a lot of stuff and they, they were very generous. They gave away a lot of the stuff and whatnot, but there was so much stuff that we couldn't delegate it because yeah, you could, I mean, you could, you know, if somebody says, well, why don't I do it for you? Well, yeah, you can pay somebody 15 bucks an hour and say, great, take out the trash. That's a very different thing. Yeah. But if you want some sort of, you know, care to it, like I've even, there's two things I've let go of. I let go of my middle school yearbooks and I'm still mad that I did that. But of all the things, that's probably the one or the two things of literally hundreds of things I've let go of, but I got to do it. Whereas if somebody else did it for me, I might be carrying a story of, oh, well, they did that. And why did they do that? 
So it's almost it's almost like a little dangerous, no? Um, one of my rules of decluttering is don't throw out other people's stuff. Because especially if it's your spouse, because um, it just creates so much tension in a relationship. And so what I always say is when a wife says to me, oh, but my husband's really the problem. <laughs> That's like a common refrain that I hear. Uh, when a wife says that to me, I said, listen, if his stuff is getting in the way of your cleanliness, just box it up, put the date on it. So you know when you did it and put it in the basement. If he really needs it, he'll go down and get it. Like most of the stuff, they don't even notice it's not there. And this, this goes the other way too, for wives too. Like I have some clients who are husbands, right? And, and I just say like, if it's in your way and it's bothering you, then just box it up. Like you're not throwing it out when they need it, they can go and search for it, but it doesn't need to be in prime real estate. Yeah. And that's the other thing that I I've learned so much is, you know, sometimes people get caught up in the, you know, well, I could sell it for this amount. Ah, oh, that's and, the worst. <laughs> well, okay. I have my idea on that before I, what do you, what do you tell people when they say I could, I could sell it. Okay. And, so the problem and assuming is, it's not some, like, it's not like, you know, something that's worth $10 million, but right. just the normal, I can sell it. The problem with selling it is that it takes time to sell it. So you so you have to hold on to it until it sells. And that means that it's still clutter in your space. So yeah, if you got, if you have something that's like, okay, if you have some really good furniture, let's say, yeah, that's probably worth selling, but be prepared to sell it at a much lower price because like, you know, you're selling it secondhand. You're not going to get what the retail value is for it. Right. I mean, for most things anyways. Um, but like, I find that the best thing to do is to let it go. And what it does is it creates this space for you to have abundance come into your life and the money will come back to you. I got to tell you that most of the time when I'm doing decluttering with people, I would say 90% of the time people find significant amounts of money, like several hundred dollars because it's like it created this space vacuum. First of all, people stash money in the weirdest places. But like, oh wait, you mean they literally they find the cash? They you don't find mean, cash. Oh no, you're not feeding from selling stuff. Like they literally find cash. All right. They find checks that they misplaced. They find like gift cards. Well, and you know the, the thing about the selling it is just what you said. Now you've got another job, and right. how much do you make per hour? And do you really want to do that? And then oh, by the way, That's eBay. Awesome. Okay, great. Now you've got to go to the UPS store and buy some stuff and ship like all this exactly. <clears throat> and it's usually not worth what you paid for it. And then plus, if you donate it, depending on how you do your taxes, you get a tax break for it. So you might end up with the same amount of a tax break, you know, 20, 30 percent ish and close enough. And then you might help somebody. So there's there's so much, I think, confidence in gently letting something go. I mean, what have you found with that? I find that it just when you can let things go, it's like, it's like the good karma comes to you when you can donate it and it's universe, it's God, it's whatever you believe in, like being like, well, you are generous. I always say, actually, what I always say to my, to my clients is, um, you are blessed to receive it, pass the blessing onto somebody else. I love that. And that's huge. Like when you can reframe it for yourself in that way, it becomes more about like making space for yourself to do the things that you want to do um, and less about the stuff and the money. And I think that that's like the whole point, like going to the beach doesn't make you any money, but it makes you happy. <laughs> right. Like, and in, in the way that we earn more money is by being happy and having gratitude and, and feeling good. And like that attracts these other positive things to us. So I feel like when you can, when you can do that, it's, it's easier. I'm actually coming to the U S next week and um, I'm going to clean out my parents' house and I'm actually going to be documenting it on Instagram. If anybody wants to watch it. Oh, um, that should be cool. Yeah. Because I was like, 
okay, so I'm an organizer. It's my childhood home, right? My parents lived there for 44 years until my mom, my dad still lives there, but my mom passed away. And um, I haven't been able to get back since she passed away because of Corona. And so I'm, I'm coming next week. And I, I've already made a plan of exactly how I want to approach it. And I am anticipating having some emotional days. <laughs> um, but like, I think, and I said to my dad, I said, listen, even I, I'm going to need help. I'm going to need help. First of all, from a physical standpoint, like I know in the basement, there's like a lot of stuff that's just going to be heavy lifting. So I'm going to need some help. So that I'm waiting till my brother comes. Um, but like the other areas in the house, I just was like, I'm going to need help with the paperwork because I'm not really sure. I'm not in charge of the estate. I'm not really sure what is necessary to keep and what is not necessary to keep. So I need your hand, but everything else I can, I have like car blanche to like make decisions on. In that situation, I said to my dad, I was like, I need your help. And so like, even I ask for help. Like, I don't think anybody can do all things alone even if you professionally do those things. And um, this isn't necessarily about decluttering, but um, related to the topic is when you can get help, outsource or, or just get assistance in general, just to make projects easier for yourself, it's always worth it because in the end, even though you're spending money on, well, in my case, I'm not spending money on it, but even if you spend money on it, you get it back in time because working with somebody else helps you move more quickly. Thank you. So first of all, I'm sorry to hear about your mom. Um, it's okay. <laughs> thoughts and prayers and all that stuff. Debbie had shared a couple of things. I just figured let her jump on real quick and share. Cause she had some really cool comments. I thought. I, I'm loving what you're sharing, Rebecca. It's so perfect. Thanks. We, um, my whole family just did what we call the great purge of 2020, which is now continuing in 2021. <laughs> They've, they've gotten older, right? My family's a little bit older and like, wait, you know, not saying anything negative about my parents are amazing. And, um, they got to a point where my father was, you know, had fallen down the stairs and they had been on the second floor. And so we had to go through and kind of downsize a house that they lived in for over 50 years. And, uh, it literally took, I don't even know, maybe six months just to kind of get the main things done. Right. And like you were talking about the emotional pieces, my mom still has pictures of me from when I was in, I drew like in second grade, they're hanging on the wall. Like, and those things for her, are like talismans to that time. And they're very precious, but she's done so good. They're on the first floor. Now they have the whole thing organized. And, and what you said about getting help is so important. My aunt and my uncle came over. It was during the middle of the pandemic. So it was kind of crazy, but we managed to get through a lot of the pieces. And we found that you had to just like kind of organize things into groups and then pick the group you were going to go at that day. And, uh, and, and then my husband and I decided because of what's going on with them, that we were going to downsize our home. So literally in three weeks, we decided to put our house in the market three weeks to downsize three quarters of a four bedroom home, wow. moved our stuff across country from San Diego to DC, got an RV, three cats in an RV. We're like stuffing stuff in, <laughs> trying to get in the RV, but, um, and then, and then, you know, we closed in the house by the time pretty much we're almost here. So then everything kind of flowed, but uh, we're now living in that space that had cleared out to be near them. We're renting that out with them. And I, I rented an office because I had a way bigger space before. But the beauty of the space that was created is the love that has filled it, the time that we have together now. Um, they're not constantly swimming in things or wondering where things are, or their mind is not consumed, which, you know, as you get older, some of your capacities are a little less are not consumed with where those things are. And we don't even realize, I think, how much of our mental process, if you think of like a CPU as our brain is being used up, right? On those things. Decision fatigue is a real thing. Yeah. Like, and, and when you're thinking about like all the things you have to do, it definitely related to like stuff. And even to not stuff from a time management perspective, we have to-do list, right? When you think about all those things all the time, it's like, it's stressful and it inhibits our ability to make decision, other important decisions. I mean, the most powerful people in the world wear uniforms um, because, uh, you know, presidents usually wear uniforms. Mark Zuckerberg wears a uniform, Carolina Herrera, Diane von Furstenberg, like famous fashion designers wear uniforms because 
wearing a uniform and not thinking about what you're wearing enables you to spend more of your creative force doing what you love to do. And it, it frees up your, your brain to function at a higher power, I think. And I think what, what's key about what you said, um, Debbie, is that when you, when you can free that up, it just, it makes things so much easier. Like some nights I sit at my house and I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? <laughs> I look around, there's no dishes, there's nothing on the floor. Like, I'm like, honey, you want to watch TV? You want to go out? Like, it's just That's nice. Awesome. We can just sit there and have like, a nice time together. And I think that's, that's, that's the point, right? Like, why else are we doing it if we can't sit on the couch and watch TV if we want to? My two new mantras are less is more and I value space over stuff. Yeah, I just do. 100%. Those are my two things. So, I that's love everything. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Debbie. I wanted to really quickly make sure for people, um, Rebecca didn't want to brag on herself too much, but you'll see in the workbook, there's a thing she has that's called her power hours. Uh, for cleaning. Uh, check that out. That's really cool stuff. She helps people um, in a group setting over Zoom uh, to declutter their stuff. So that's something else that if you think you need help or want some help, that she could help you with that. Rebecca, thank you so much for sharing your stuff. Thank My you pleasure. for uh, joining us again. Uh, thinking of you and your family. Uh, hope thank things you. go well. With Can all I just that. quickly um, add that this week is the last week for Power Hours uh, this coming Sunday. Um, and we'll resume again in late July, August. So if you're interested, definitely send me an email and I'll put you on awesome. the list. Awesome. Safe travels. Thanks Thank for you having so me. much for coming out. Absolutely. All right. Take care. Bye.